The Expedition 40 astronauts going to be doing a multitude of experiments during their time on board the International Space Station. Here to talk about uh, some of the experiments that they're going to be doing is related to biological studies. I have Dr. Scott Smith. He's the manager of nutritional biochemistry here at Johnson Space Center. So, Dr. Smith, first off, thanks for joining me today. Now, May is Osteoporosis Awareness Month, so I want to focus on bones today. Now. We all know that our bodies, you know, they're very great at adapting to new environments and they change quite a bit in space. What are some of the experiments that you guys are doing related to bone study? Okay, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. It's, it's great to get to talk about some of the stuff that we're doing back in the lab. Um, we actually have, uh, we have a few experiments going on on board station these days. Mm -hmm. um, one of them that is, is active right now is what we call the biochemical profile experiment. And that involves uh, the crew collecting um, biological samples that allow us to see how their bones are adapting to spaceflight. Mm -hmm. Now, we, you know, everybody's used to x-rays that you can take, and obviously we don't have an x-ray machine on orbit. Um, and what these samples allow us to do is to see what's happening with bone uh, during flight. And one of the more striking findings that we've, we've come across recently um, is that, you know, we, we've known for for some time now that astronauts lose bone during flight. Mm -hmm. um, with the resistive exercise protocols, essentially the weight lifting, if you will, protocols that the uh, crew members perform on orbit, what we've shown recently is that those protocols in crew members that are eating well, getting enough calories, mm -hmm. um, have good vitamin D status, that when they exercise hard, that we can actually help maintain the density of their bones uh, during space flight. So really one of the countermeasures that we've really focused on in these past few years has been exercise and nutrition. That's it's, correct. It's a combination. That's correct. And, and it, it, it really does take both of those things. Um, and I would say we focused on exercise for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go back to Skylab, those crews had some exercise available. Um, it was only recently, though, that we flew a device that we call the A-RED, mm -hmm. which is the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, which allows crews to, to essentially, again, lift enough weight um, to signal the bones that they need to be there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what happens in flight is the body realizes that you're not using your bones. And, you know, I would say your body does what you pay it for. Mm -hmm. So if you're not walking around, if you're not carrying things, if you don't have that mass pushing on the body, your bone says, your body says, well, I don't need this skeleton. Let's make a lighter one that we can use up here. And that can um, be bit of trouble once you get back exactly. down to the ground. Exactly. It, it works great while you're up there, but if you mm -hmm. want to come home, it tends to cause problems. Okay. Um, now, and just real quick, you mentioned that um, the crews are taking various samples during their time on the International Space Station. What are some of those samples that they're taking, and how are you guys using them? Well, you know, again, I lead what's called the Nutritional Biochemistry Lab, and what mm -hmm. we do is look at, at biochemicals, things in the blood, things in the urine, um, that tell us about what's going on in the bone. Okay. So it, it works in concert with the x-ray studies that are done before and after flight. Um, but uh, our, our magic is, is in the blood and urine. And crews, um, up to five times during flight, will collect blood samples for us. Mm -hmm. um, they'll collect urines uh, over a course of 24 hours. They'll collect all of their urine for us. No samples are processed. That is, the blood samples are centrifuged. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, both the blood and the urine go into a freezer on board station, what we call the Melfi, which is a minus 80, um, it's the minus 80 laboratory freezer on okay. ISS. Um, those samples are frozen um, until, uh, until we can get them back from, from station. And we just recently got some of those back, SpaceX's Dragon vehicle returning to Earth back on May 18th. Um, so we now have this return capability again. Uh, how much, real quick, how much did SpaceX bring back for you guys and how quickly were you able to get your hands on it? Well, for our experiments, uh, SpaceX brought home just about uh, 700 samples, wow. uh, tubes of blood and urine. Um, so we were very excited about this and we're, we're big fans of SpaceX because SpaceX right now is the only way we can bring those samples home. Mm -hmm. um, so that works out very well. The SpaceX splashed down a week ago Sunday. Um, last Wednesday was when the samples made their way back to Houston, um, and, and my team was there. We inventoried samples that morning, um, brought them all back over to our lab, and the folks have already started processing those and getting them ready for analysis. So the process is a little slow. It'll take us a few months to get all mm -hmm. the work out of them, but we've already started. Okay. 
Well, we've been studying bone loss, among other things, for years and years on station. What are just some of the things, you know, we know that we're losing bone. What are some of the other things that we've really learned, and how is that so important to space flight in the future? Well, again, the, the exercise, uh, the, the exercise and, and nutrition protocols that we've we've impacted mm -hmm. um, have managed. I would say, for the first time in 50 years uh, of flying humans in space, we've seen folks come home with the same amount of bone that they left with, which is a, which is a great thing. There are still some questions out there, though, because what what happens is the crews are maintaining density of the bone, but we don't know if the bones are as strong as they were when when they left. So we're, we're doing some follow-on studies there. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking, we're doing some follow-on studies um, looking at dietary effects on bone. And, and we've got a study called Pro-K that is looking at the ability to modify the amount of protein in the diet or the type of protein in the diet mm -hmm. and the amount of potassium in the diet. But potassium tends to be rich in um, fruits and vegetables. So essentially looking at the balance between animal protein or meat, if you will, and, mm -hmm. and fruits and vegetables. And what we believe is that by modifying that ratio, by having more fruits and vegetables and perhaps a little less meat, um, that we can help to, to further mitigate the bone loss during space flight. And that'll be real important as we send astronauts even further for longer durations of time. Ab absolutely. This, this could have significant impact on uh, the food systems that we build for, for exploration missions mm -hmm. um, and can help us better, you know, again, counteract bone loss um, on, the, on those future missions. So we're, we're very excited about that. That experiment's been going on for a few years, and actually Reed Wiseman, who just launched, will be our last subject in that, in that study. So okay. we're looking, he's sort of the beginning of the end, if you will, and we're, we're looking forward to wrapping that one up and finding out what we get. Gotcha, and again, so, so much of what we do on the International Space Station, not only for improving astronaut health and you know, future exploration, it also very often has benefits to life right down here on Earth. What are some of the things that we've learned that's going to help benefit people in a real way down here on Earth that we're hoping will in the very near future? Well, as you said, you know, that there are a number of changes to the body during spaceflight, and bone mm -hmm. is unique in that we see very rapid bone loss. So we see bone loss, we see the amount of bone loss in about six months of spaceflight is what you'd see in a, in a, a postmenopausal woman in about five years. Wow. So we can almost do what you would think of as like a time-lapse photography type study mm -hmm. where, you know, if we can find things that can impact bone health in six months, um, to do that same type of study on Earth would take you uh, three, four, five years. Yeah. Um, and the, the dietary study is a perfect example of um, if we can help better understand the role of nutrition, uh, the role of specific dietary components on bone loss during spaceflight, uh, the implications for the general population could be profound.